it's the end of August almost, well, middle of August. Uh, temperatures are cooling down. It's only mid-90s today. Um, Humidity is only 80%, so uh, you, can, you, know, you can tell the feel the nip in the air of fall. And that can only mean a couple things. First of all, college football you know, and high school football. Second thing it means um, is that we need to be on the lookout for fall armyworms. If you do not have Bermuda grass pastures or hayfield or a, or a nice, well manicured Bermuda grass uh, yard, this might be the most boring show that I've ever done uh, because most of the time these pests are going to attack Bermuda grass, either lawns, or pastures, or hayfields. Hi, I'm Jeff Cook. This is Backyard Basics. And like I said, we're going to talk for a little bit about a couple timely topics. And the most timely thing we can talk about right now is going to be fall armyworms. Uh, late summer to early fall, uh, anywhere from August to October depending on what the weather does and, and what, the, what, our, what our grasses are doing. Um, and like I said, the majority of what we see it on is we see it on Bermuda grass hayfields, Bermuda grass pastures, but we also, on some of the sod farms around here in this area, we'll find it on Bermuda grass sod. And if they get hungry enough, we'll find them on all kinds of other things. You know, I've heard people talk about them crawling up sides of walls, you know, going through pe peach orchards. So I want to talk a little bit about the biology of them and how they come into a field and how they do so much damage, um, kind of give you a better idea of that. That should help folks with hay fields and pastures better understand what they need to be doing to protect that investment. So let's start with the adults. The adults are very inconspicuous, brownish, tannish moths. Um, you know, you wouldn't notice them. They're not very special looking, about an inch and a half long. And they do most of their flying. They become really active at twilight. So as the sun starts setting, it's cool, cooling off a little bit, the moths are starting to fly. What the, what the female moth will do, the female moth finds an area with a, you know, a nice green hayfield, pasture, something like that, and she'll actually lay egg masses, uh, eggs in, in, the, in clumps of hundreds, um, but she'll lay them outside of the, um, outside of the, the, the hayfield. She'll lay them like on this pecan tree right here, or maybe on the pine trees adjacent to the field. Um, as you can see behind me, there's an there's a empty field behind me, and that's actually a bunch of uh, volunteer Texas millet. But what was there was corn. And as those corn stalks were still standing, they're lighter colored, that would be very attractive to a fall armyworm female to go and lay eggs. So after she lays the eggs, with two to four days, and it all really depends on the weather. As the weather warms up, that it's probably more close to two days. When it's cooler, you know, earlier in the year, it might be four days. But anyway, two to four days, these eggs will hatch. They all hatch at the same time. So when they hatch, the, the young larvae, which are about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit less, little tiny worm with a black head, they will spin a little bit of silk to allow them to balloon into a field. So they'll float down into this field and begin feeding right when they, right when they land. Um, these little immature larvae, they go through six stages, or th six instars. So as they, they'll molt and, and get just a little bit bigger, molt and get just a little bit bigger. The first three or four instars do very little feeding. You would not really, be, you wouldn't come out in this field and see a bunch of grass missing. Um, what you would see, I was trying to find some, some of it is actually kind of gone. What you would see when they first start feeding is you'll see injury on the, the leaf blades like this. Um, the bigger the grass, the harder they are to see and the harder the damage is to see. But you'll see a lot of this in the first two or three instars where they're, they're not really able to actually eat the whole leaf, but they're feeding, kind of chafing, um, taking the top and bottom sections off. Um, that's the first thing to look for. Okay, so, and, and then as they get bigger, more, you know, they eat obviously proportionally more. And the larger one to one and a half inch, you know, four, fifth and sixth instar larvae, they can eat a whole lot of, of grass and they eat a lot of grass quick. That's why it seems like when you have an infestation, a lot of people say it happened overnight. Well, those first three instar, you know, the first three instars, which, you know, probably took about 10 days, they didn't do a lot of feeding, a lot of noticeable feeding. Um, then your, your last two or three instars, they do a lot of feeding, a lot of rapid feeding. And when you've got hundreds and hundreds of worms in the field, you know, it looks like it happened overnight. Um, from egg hatch, to a, a mature larvae, which is like I said, six instars, is gonna take two to three weeks. Once again, as the season progresses, it's gonna be more like two weeks. You got warmer temperatures, you got more, to, more for them to eat, they're gonna grow off more rapidly and they're gonna, they're gonna cycle through more rapidly. Once the mature larvae 
once it becomes mature, it's fully, fully developed, they will fall off, burrow into the ground, just below the soil surface, and pupate. And that pupation, the pupation takes about um, two weeks. So they're in the ground for two weeks, they emerge as moths, moths start flying, and what do they do? They go find another pine tree, another corn stalk, pecan tree in a hay, near a hay field. They find that tree to go lay eggs again and start the cycle all over again. The moths are flying, they're laying eggs, these eggs are rehatching, and, and they're coming out, like I said, every two to four days. What I've been seeing, and what everybody I think has been seeing, is we have not been going into a hay field like this. Uh, this is a hay field over in Reynolds, and I think it's been sprayed now three times on this just one cut of hay. Um, what we're seeing is we're going into a field, and we're not finding all the, all the larvae the same size. You know, we're finding larvae that are anywhere from a quarter inch all the way up to fully mature. So that tells us that these moths are flying multiple evenings, laying eggs multiple nights, because if each clump, if each cluster or mass of eggs is hatched at the same time, then these, most of these larvae should be the same size, but they're not, they're not like that. So what I tell people, and with you got this kind of investment that folks have, you know, getting these Bermuda grass hay fields established, getting them, you know, planted, fertilizing them, that, that fertilizer alone is a huge, huge investment. So you need to be looking at these fields every two to three days to be ahead of the next hatch, the next movement of these worms coming into a field. And I also tell folks that you can't do a very, very, very effective job of scouting your hay fields for army worms from the truck. It's very hard to sit in your truck and ride around a hay field and tell if you have a real bad problem. Um, what I recommend doing is walking across the field um, and taking a look actually in the grass. I mean, you actually need to kneel down because these things are pretty small. So you get out in the field. I do a lot of kicking. Um, I actually have a sweep net so you can sweep, but I just do a lot of kicking. And once you kick it, you can part that grass. And what you've parted is about a square foot. And what we tell people is if you have small larvae, over three small larvae in a square foot, then that's a treatable population. That's a population that can cause some severe damage. Um, so, like I said, if you got the investment, you know, it doesn't take too much time to ride by your hayfield, turn the truck off, get out, and walk across it. Or, you know, take a relative. Take a, take a son or a daughter, a granddaughter, a grandson. Take them to drop them off on one side and pull over to the other side and tell them to walk across and look for army worms. That's a good scouting tool. Uh I can't get him to get on it. I don't really like spiders, so. When you should treat, and then what should you do to treat? First off, like I said, if you have small army worms, um, less than a quarter of an inch, quarter to half an inch, and more than you know three or more per square foot, uh, that's a treatable population. Just because you go right here and you find 50 in a square foot doesn't mean you should treat. You should check other spots in the field. If you've got 50 over here, most likely you've got a treatable population, but you could find that you have one little, you know, one little pocket where some, some worms you know, came into a field and they took off. You'll usually, you, you'll usually see them to start off the year. You'll see them in sections. You won't see them across the whole field. But as we get into August, September, October, you can see fields where the entire field has army worms in it, you know, wall to wall, everywhere. Um, but like I said, just go by the three, the three per square foot rule. And there's plenty of insecticides that we can spray that will control them. Um, some keys to using insecticides properly on a hay field is one, make sure you have plenty of water. You're putting plenty of water out with the insecticide. When you get into tall, real thick grass, it's hard to get an insecticide down to where the, the, the larvae will feed. Um, the younger larvae will usually feed, um, well, on smaller, on smaller grass, freshly cut grass, they're going to be in the sod. They're going to be down in the ground during the day when it's hot. They'll be out early evening in the morning feeding, so that's the best time to kill them. In thicker grass, a lot of times they can feed all day because it's a little bit cooler in that grass, and it's also a little harder to get your insecticide to them. So plenty of water um, is key and plenty of pressure to get that stuff down in there and get it really blown around in the, in the plants. Um, there are some pretty interesting things you'll see if you really get out looking in a of course, the person that has the, the infestation won't, like, don't, won't think it's interesting. But there are some pretty interesting things you'll see when you get out in these fields. A lot of times you'll see uh, wasps carrying army worms around. Um, there's a lot of, there's a few uh, wasps that actually sting the army worms and lay eggs inside of them or on them. Um, and there's also, and I've seen a few of them out here, I've seen one here and one in another hay field I was in earlier today. There's actually some, uh, some fungi that will 
attack and parasitize um, some of these armyworms. All, you know, all like I said, all of this is interesting. It's it's it's, not, it's neat to see, but it's not something that's going to control these armyworms aside from you spraying. Um, the other option that you do have, you know, on a, a hay field like this, is if it got too bad, you could go out here and harvest the hay. Um, just go ahead and harvest it and let it dry down. As it dries down, the army worms are going to go somewhere else, try and find something new. Um, one problem with that is if you do get into a situation where we have afternoon rains and your grass stays kind of wet, um, you can actually have them continue to feed while that grass is on the ground. So <laughs> your, your grass isn't going to keep growing, and then they start, then they keep feeding on it when it's on the ground. I, I've only seen that happen one time, but I, I do remember it very uh, vividly. So I definitely make sure I remind people of that when we're talking about harvesting to, to stay ahead of army worms. All right, I know we were talking about hay fields and, and pastures, and I said if you didn't have a hay field or pasture, you, you might find this to be the most boring uh, show ever that I've ever done. Um, one thing I didn't consider when I said that was there's a lot of people in Georgia that love dove hunting. And, they, you know, most folks will tell you they like, to, they like to hunt over sunflowers because, for whatever reason, the bigger seed bringing bigger birds, more birds. Uh, but we still have a lot of people that use brown top millet. Um, Texas millet is a good... Uh, dove food, you know, if you can if you can get it to grow. Most people don't plant it, but it volunteers very nicely. This is an old cornfield. It was corn, a lot of Texas millet in it. And if you can see from this that I'm holding up right now, this had a severe this had a severe infestation of army worms, just like the uh, Bermuda grass. And that's one thing with the fall army worms. They not only like our Bermuda grass species, they also love a lot of these annual grasses that grow in our area. They love crabgrass. They love brown top millet. They love Texas millet. Um, they'll also feed on sorghum and things like that, sorghum Sudan grass. So if you have a, either an annual uh, area that you're grazing for your cattle, or you got a bird field somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, um, it's a good idea to check that. Or if you know folks that have uh, brown top millet or, or Texas millet or something like that as a bird field, it's a good idea to have them look at it this time of year. You know, birds, bird season will probably be started by, before you even see this. Um, but, you know, I have, I have seen years where entire bird fields are destroyed before they ever put a seed head on, and it's by this pest. Um, that's one reason. This, and this field being, this grass being a lighter color, plus having corn stalks earlier, was probably a great spot for these army worms to come lay eggs. Then they balloon down. They probably hit here first and gradually got worse and worse and, 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 and more more moving out into this hay field. Um, I always tell people it's a lot easier usually too to find the damage on a bigger, broader leafed annual grass than it is on our Bermuda grasses. Bermuda grasses are a lot smaller leaf, finer stems, harder to see, but on these bigger leaves, you know, they, there's a lot of leaf area for those, these insects to, to feed on. And before we finish talking about grasses, I'm gonna talk about one more pest uh, that's hitting our hay fields right now that if you have hay, you're gonna, we're gonna need to be you know, putting out preventative treatments for, you know, starting now up until our last hay cutting. <laughs> Enjoyed this episode. Maybe you learned a little bit, even if you don't have Bermuda grass hay, you know, if that's not li your livelihood or you don't have cows to feed. And hopefully Tim learned something, my cameraman. He said he's got a speech class he's got to do, and he's got to do it on insect pests. So, I mean, what a better topic than fall army worms. Um, like I, as I said, you cannot scout for these, this pest from the, the seat of your truck. You need to actually get out in the field. You need to get down on a knee and look at the grass, part it apart, look at it, get a net and, and look at it. I mean, ride a gator across it and look at, look at the tires. You know, do something like that. Or if you can't kneel down on a knee, get your grandson and granddaughter to go out there and, and look. They'll have, a, they'll have a blast trying to find worms. Um, as always, I'm always open for suggestions. We'll have my email address on the screen. You know, email me with suggestions, questions, whatever you got. Uh, I serve Taylor and Peach Counties, and you know, if I can help you out with any ag-related question, I'll do it. Um, I'm Jeff Cook. This is Backyard Basics, where we're filmed in your backyard. <laughs>